There's all kinds of different scientists out there, working all over the world in all different kinds of environments, researching all different kinds of topics. But they all have one thing in common. They ask questions. Scientists are naturally curious, right? That's so it all starts with sort of a, just a curiosity to know what's happening in, in something. But to actually find out what's happening in something, scientists have to ask a very specific type of question called the testable question. To understand why testable questions are at the heart of science, we're going to look at the work that Kim and Kay are doing. Kay Beidel and Kim Tomatricon are marine microbiologists at Rutgers University. The work that we're doing is looking at the role that light plays in mediating host virus interactions in the ocean. Could light be structuring infection in the infection process itself? Let's back up. Kim and Kay's team studies the interaction between a tiny phytoplankton called Emiliania huxleyi, or EHUX, and the virus that infects EHUX. These guys are phytoplankton, and they use sunlight to make their own food, which means they need light to grow. These guys infect these guys and kill them. When Kim and Kay were on an expedition together, they wondered whether light was affecting the interaction between hosts and virus. They were curious. And so I was like, well, how does that work? Kim wondered, how does light affect this host-virus interaction? While this is a great initial curiosity question that often initiates scientific research, it's not a testable question because... It could be a number of different answers. It can affect the virus itself. It can lead to viral decay. It can um, enhance growth rate of the host, and so therefore it stimulates viral production. How does light do it is not... There's too many ways to answer that question. Okay, this distinction may seem a little subtle, so to help understand what makes a question testable, we'll use the SMART acronym, where SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Temporal. We're going to go through each one by taking our initial broad question and then modifying it into an actual testable question that Kay and Kim's team tested. So starting with S, specific. For a question to be testable, it needs to be specific, meaning you should be asking a question that has one defined answer. This is why you can't just say, how does light affect host virus interactions? Um, and there are just a million different ways to answer that. There's no defined answer. And with no defined answer, you can't design an experiment that will give you meaningful results. But if you say, does light affect host virus interactions? Then your answer is either yes or it's no. Now that's specific. Now you can design experiments to test that question. In order to answer that specific question, we have to design a number of different experiments. It's not one experiment per question. And that's because light is still very broad. Light can have different intensities and it can have different wavelengths. We did an experiment where we infected in the dark and then we did an experiment where we infected in constant light and then we did an experiment at different light irradiances. So for our initial question to be testable, we need to think about how to make it specific. So it becomes this. Does light at different wavelengths and intensities affect host virus interaction? So, specific, check. Next, M, measurable. A testable question should lead to answers that have measurable results. So is the answer to this question measurable? Well, you can measure the amount of light organisms get, you can measure the brightness of the light, you can measure the amount of infected cells versus non-infected cells in a sample. But if you want to measure the effect of light on the viral process of infection, you have to be able to measure what's going on with just the virus. And one of the challenges that Kim faced is that light affects both hosts and viruses. And so if you test a, you know, too big of a range of light, now you've got a situation where not enough light and the host is unhappy, and too much light and the host is unhappy. Kim and Kay's team were able to find a narrow range of light intensities that affect the virus, but keep the host happy. So they know the question they are asking is measurable. So we can modify this question accordingly. Does light at different wavelengths and intensities that don't affect the host affect the virus? So measurable, check. Okay, next, A, achievable. Whether you are in a science class or a professional scientist, you need to ask, do I have the stuff to do this thing in the time I have? We push our students to recognize that there are constraints in terms of what they can do in the classroom with science, with the time and the supplies that we have but we parallel this to the constraints that a scientist would see in the field. Uh, they have more resources available and more time available to them, but they still go through the same process. So is our question achievable? 
Well, to answer this, we need stuff like lights that can be adjusted to specific brightnesses, bottles for samples, a big machine called a flow cytometer that can count infected cells, and finally, you need samples of cells. The organisms we study, we can grow in the lab and we can do controlled experiments, but ultimately we want to know what are they doing out in nature in this big ocean at this small scale in a really big place. And so we want to try and replicate that. So when we're actually going in and designing a testable question for a process that we're trying to measure at sea, can we achieve that condition that's going to actually allow us to answer that question that we're asking? So if you have the stuff and you have the time, then it's achievable. Check. So the question becomes, does light at different wavelengths and intensities that don't affect the host affect the virus? Given that our equipment and the time we have allows us to perform an experiment on this organism that can be successfully grown in a lab. Next, relevant. Is this question even relevant? For example, our question so far is specific, measurable, and achievable. But what if here we're asking about wavelengths of light that aren't even present in the ocean? Well, obviously, if these guys live in the ocean and there's not a lot of red and yellow light where they are, it's not relevant to ask about those wavelengths of light. So the question becomes, does light at the wavelengths present in the ocean and intensities that don't affect the host affect the virus? Given that our equipment and the time we have allows us to perform an experiment yeah. organism that can be successfully okay. grown in the lab. Relevant? Check. Finally, temporal. The question should be grounded in time. So back to our question. Does this question relate to a specific time? The infection process that we study takes place over a certain, you know, few days, three to four days. So the experiments that we set up are not gonna, gonna you know, run out for you know, weeks at a time. So we may be interested in asking questions within the first 24 hours. You can't do an experiment that never ends. That's why your testable question has to have a time component to it. Temporal, check. And now finally we have arrived at our big testable question. Does light at the wavelengths present in the ocean and the intensities that don't affect the host affect the virus in the first 24 to 48 hours of infection? Given that our equipment and the time we have yeah. allows us to Because professional scientists practice thinking scientifically all the time, they don't need to consciously go through this SMART acronym every time they ask a question. Nor do they always arrive at one master question like we've done here. But they are always making sure that the questions they're asking are testable so they can run experiments and get answers that are actually meaningful. If you like the tools of science, please subscribe. And if you want to learn about more tools, click next video.